Growing up was really tough. So I grew up in a family of eight kids and two parents. The house was a mess inside and outside. My father was just mad all the time. He could get very violent. There was sexual assault as well by several people. Not my father, but it was several incidents that, that happened in between any time that I was from probably 11 till up until the time I left home. And it really made me uh, not just have a distrust for men, because it was men, uh, but inside myself psychologically, it really, really impaired me in many, many ways. I would always sit up on the top of a Dan bank um, at home and I would, I would try and talk to God, the God that I didn't know, and ask if he was real. And then I would think, oh no, like you're so bad, he would never listen to you. So it was just not a nice place. It was not a safe place that I remember. My 14th birthday was an absolute turnaround in my life. I had invited a few friends over. We had a big bonfire. My dad, in his usual way, had a shotgun crooked over his arm and he was watching us and um, just waiting for us to do something wrong. And of course, one of these young guys called my sister a bad name and my dad, he took out that gun, cracked it at that boy. He missed, but that boy was going up the road. He was a good shot, so he should have actually probably killed him. And then within that year, I stole some money and moved to I moved to the big city, I was 15. The turning point for good in my life came when I was arrested and I knew that all of these things that were culminating in my life were coming to a head and I knew that I was gonna go into the big girl's prison and it was like it hit me. Rosalie, you've come to the end of yourself. And I just said, oh God, if you, if you can use someone like me, I will serve you. And the judge had looked at me for I don't know, it seemed like the longest time. And he says, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm gonna let you off on probation. So I was a couple of states away from my auntie and I knocked on her door and I said, Auntie Maureen, I need that Jesus that you've been telling me about. And she prayed with me. The difference right away was an absolute peace that I'd never felt before. And I would say an almost sense of a belonging, this overwhelming peace that I had been accepted. And I absolutely knew in that moment that in all my ugliness, in all my, I mean, I was a kleptomaniac. I mean, I lived a very lascivious life. There was, I held back no wickedness. I knew that in that moment that he had seen me in the darkness of my heart and says, I want, I choose her. I knew it, I somehow knew it. And so I, I was praying, I said, I, I said, God, I, I don't know how, but if you can just get me to another place that I can start all over again. And so I, I had thought of Canada, it was a part of the Commonwealth. And we ended up going to this, uh, it was a Pentecostal church. And here's these people, they've got their hands up, they're singing, and there was something so real and true about it. Both of us went forward in the altar call and that very week was in Bible school. God restored my life almost in a whirlwind. I had met my husband now of um, 27 years in, in church. So yeah, I didn't like men, right? So it was kind of a funny thing, but then I'm thinking God came in the image of a man. And then I realized that Jesus was a man, but yet he had a great respect for women. And so I was confronted with this God who really respected women. As he sent me these different people in my life that I respected, Carson was one. The one thing I asked for was someone who would never yell at me, who would never hit me, um, and that would respect me. Carson is all those things and more. I have learned a lot about men through him. I would say that the message of my journey would be the love of God that passes knowledge. Because he took me, the most sinful, most ungodly of people, and he says, I wanna be your friend. I wanna love you. And I think it's taken me all this time to be able to really receive, and I am still in awe of the love of God. And that's what I want people to know, is that he just wants to love you right where you are, because that's what he did for me.